Dad could be so annoying. Mum said he needed a break, but to fly all the way to New Zealand just so he could go on this wretched fishing trip and then to make her go too. Jersey fixed him with her most disgusted glare. Why couldn't I go Christmas shopping with Mum? I made peanut butter sandwiches, said Dad. Oh, I'm so excited. Dad, I'm ten, not five. Good. Then you can take over from Uncle Paul so he can come and catch some snapper. Jersey pictured her friends in Sydney planning barbecues or surfing in Bondi. She stamped her way towards the cabin where Uncle Paul was steering the boat. Dad says I'm to take over, she growled. Thanks, Jersey. Here, stand on this box. Keep heading for that gap. French pass. Shout when you're nearly there. Why? Because the pass is dangerous. Jersey took hold of the wheel and fixed her stare on the water in front of the little cruiser. Do you want to play pirates? asked her sister Jade. No, Jersey replied. Why not? Because I don't. You could be the captain if you like, and I'll be the pirate. Jade leapt into a, an on-guard position and brandished her sword. Battle commenced. Jade defended her box of treasure by lying across it. But Jade managed to prize a few gold coins from it. Then Jersey spotted a piece of rope and tied Jade's hands behind her back. Oh, she began to fake cry, of course. What on earth is going on up here? Oh, now Dad was cross. Have you seen where we are? Jersey jumped onto her box. The turbulent water that linked Palora Sound with Tasman Bay was swirling around them. They were in French Pass. Before Dad could take hold of the helm, the cruiser was caught in a whirlpool. It lurched violently, hurling Jade across the deck and over the side into the angry water. A sick feeling hit Jersey's stomach. Her sister was a good swimmer, but not with her hands tied behind her back. Where was she? She wasn't coming to the surface. Dad dived into the blue-green water. Uncle Paul threw the life ring in after him. Instantly, it was caught by the current and carried away. Jersey choked on sobs of panic. But then, then the life ring began to move against the current, back towards her dad. How could this be? Jade spluttered to the surface, only to disappear again. Dad managed to grab hold of her with one hand, just as the life ring arrived at his side and gave him something to cling to. A grey phantom was holding it in position. No, not a phantom. Jersey peered into the water. Dolphin? Dad hauled Jay to the surface for a second time and Uncle Paul held the both boat hook. Heaving Jade over the side, Dad rested on the life ring. Jersey rushed to pull towels out of a canvas bag and wrapped, wrapped her sister up like an Egyptian mummy. Once in the boat himself, Dad grabbed at the helm frantically turning the wheel this way and that way to avoid the competing currents in French Pass. Dad, the dolphin, I think he's trying to tell you something. Sure enough, arching and rolling, the dolphin was swimming first on one side of the prow and then on the other, guiding them towards calmer water. When they finally reached the safety of Tasman Sound, he pivoted on his, 
on his tail, standing up right out of the water, as though in celebration. He knew how to save us, said Jersey, tears of relief in her eyes. Perhaps he's descended from Polaris Jack, said Uncle Paul. Who's Polaris Jack? A dolphin who lived in these waters a long time ago. He guided steamships in and out of French Pass all for more than 25 years. People came from all over the world to see him, until some Norwegian whalers shot him with a harpoon. He never guided another ship after that. Why would they do that? Did he survive? Yep and a law was passed to protect him. Do you really think Polaris Jack is the ancestor of our dolphin? How else would our dolphin know French Pass so well? Jersey hugged her sister and looked out towards Tasman Sound. She would have understood if the dolphin had wanted nothing to do with creatures who had been so cruel to his ancestor. Where are the sandwiches, Dad, she said. I'm famished.